Hey, hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Brian, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, the bearded brusher, and Pooch. Can't forget the, the lovely Pooch. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves you. You know, they say some people look like they're pets. Ah, yeah, it's getting to be about time for a shave. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, stealing the show. Just stealing the show, hey? Just gotta be the center of attention. Look at this little dude. All right, let's get on with it, guys. Uh, the pinup for the Warhawk project has been based white, as per the previous video, and now it is a matter of uh, adding some color. Um, I always like to start lights to darks and saving my highest highlights as I go using transparent colors so that my white that I've based this will fight through my colors and actually give it a bit of a interior luminosity. Just makes colors pop. And Chris, the amazing tattoo artist, will put a link uh, for his, his Instagram. Did an amazing color rendition. So we are going to play off of this. So it'll be a little different, but at least it gives me something to play off of. I don't gotta make it all up. <laughs> Alright guys, bonus. Alright, I'm gonna slap you onto the old tripod, and I'm gonna start slinging some paint. Check. It. Out. Alright guys, and to get my skin tones, I'm just taking regular Auto Air uh, Opaque White. And I've already thinned that down in just one of my little eyedropper bottles. Um, I love these guys because, again, you can do drops at a time. You can count them out. Um, and this is thinned about 50-50. 50% uh, paint, 50% my fantastic cleaning solution. And I'm going to use literally, like, I'm going to put a drop of this on my painting block. And I'm going to just dab the tiniest little bit of red. And that's going to give me my pink tones. I'm also going to use a bit of my uh, sepia for my darker skin colors. And I'm going to use my FW sepia and my FW Indian yellow. Um, I didn't name it, guys. But with that being said, it's one of my favorite yellows. I use it a lot. And there is no real correct way to do this mixture. Um, trial and error. This is kind of how I do. So with my trusty little magnets here, I'm going to place up my stencil. And start slinging some paint. And here's what it looks like. <laughs> All out of focus. And I'm just going to blast this through my stencil, guys, real quick like. And this is kind of what you will see. Once you've got these lines laid out, and all we really want to do next is blend these lines so they're not so harsh for the majority. Some of them inside the fingers, where they overlap, uh, where the legs cross over the neck, where the chin goes over top of the neck. These are some areas where you want to keep some hard edges, but for the majority, guys, we're just blending out these little lines that was mapping everything out. And, uh... We're gonna blast through this side. Uh, it really got washed out with the lighting. Again, I don't really have the best production value here, guys. I know this, but educational nonetheless. So once I've blended it out, this is what we're looking at with the first tone. It's just one color, guys. That's white mixed in with literally, okay guys, I just take a drop of red, a drop of yellow, and a drop of brown, put them on my painting block, and just dab my paintbrush. So I've got white thinned out inside my airbrush, I'll dab my paintbrush with the tiniest little bit of red, mix that inside the airbrush, dab it with the tiniest little bit of yellow, mix that inside the airbrush, and I haven't gone in with a brown for that tone yet, this is still my lightest pink, and I'm going to go in and do a few tones. So we've done the other side. Now we're coming to this side. And this is kind of a game of chasing your tail back and forth, guys. So what I like to do is you see me do one step on the first side. I flipped it over. So I'm going to continue and repeat that same step on this side. I've done my stencil. And now I'm blending out all the lines. A little bit of real time for you guys. A little bit. So you can kind of see how I do. 
using stencils to get those hard edges again where I want, again, the chin over top of the neck. You want that to be a darkened area to show that the chin is above it. So a stencil gives you a nice hard edge. Again, guys, I know this isn't the best quality, <laughs> but I'm just gonna talk you through it. <laughs> all right, so all these areas, and this is the darkest areas, guys. So we're gonna kind of keep this all relegated to the darkest areas. And even though this is our lightest paint, this is where you can be a little more, like I was saying, haphazard, a little looser with your lines, and you're just mapping it out. So as you go with your darker tones, guys, you start to bring these lines a little tighter. And I know this isn't the best quality. <laughs> We're getting there. A lot of these lighter tones, guys, are just getting washed out by my lights. But uh, we'll speed this up and we'll blast through it. You can kind of see a little bit more what's going on is as we speed her up. Um, when I'm doing real time, transparency and the light layers of paint uh, really, really make this so it's kind of hard to see what's really happening. Not that this makes it any easier. And guys, I have actually moved on to a darker color. So although the first side I only did the one tone and I moved over to this side and I brought it up to that same tone. Now I'm doing the next step on this side while I'm here. And then I'll flip flop back and I'll do two steps on that side. And then, like I say, constantly, constantly chasing your tail. So as I get some darker tones in here, guys, the lines get finer, the details get tighter, and you'll actually be able to see <laughs> what's going on. Bear with me. I promise you, it only gets better from here. And really, guys, I got to throw another shout out. My buddy, Chris. Cheesy Art on Instagram, check him out. Or if you are in my hometown, the cow town of Calgary, Alberta, come on down to Deadly Tattoos. Check out his portfolio. This little number here is amazing, but you should see what this cat can do on skin. You know what? I ain't gonna make you guys travel. I ain't gonna make you guys wait. I'll just slap up some images here. Amazing artist, dude. Very skilled and definitely a master of pinups. Am I right, guys? Check them out. Check them out on Instagram. Show them some love. And, guys, we are just wrapping up the second side. So, this is two tones now, guys. So, I did add a little bit of brown to darken up my first color that was in my brush. And now I'm adding that same secondary tone to the first side, <laughs> this is gonna get confusing. And then I'm gonna take this secondary tone and darken it up with a little bit more brown and possibly a little bit more red. And that'll give me a nice hue. And I will bring this side up to the third tone, flip her over, do the third and then the fourth on the other side, and then back here to do the fourth and then the fifth, and then flip her over, do the fifth and then the sixth. And I think you get the gist. But I'm constantly chasing my tail. And when you're doing mirror images from one side to the other, this is what I recommend, guys. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. Think about this for a minute. You finish one side to completion, and you're like, man, amazing. Wait, what? What was that first color that I used? How many custom mixes did I just go through? And I got to try to replicate that on the other side. No, guys, don't. Don't stress yourself out. Learn it from me. Take it from me. I've been there, done it. One step at a time. Keep that brush rolling. Keep those colors flowing and don't try to go back. Back steps are nightmares. <laughs> Take your time. Do it once, do it right. You've seen a couple times throughout. I'll go in with a Q-tip. Because I am doing such light layers, as you're probably guessing and checking out right now, you can hardly see the paint that I'm applying. Here we got three tones, guys. And because I'm doing such light layers of paint, and every time you guys see I'm re-registering that stencil, so that every time I'm doing a little bit darker of a paint, all these lines are being brought back up and made sure that I'm not pushing anything over 
everything is exactly where it needs to be. So back to the Q-tip, back to my light, transparent layers of paint, guys. Benefit being is because I'm doing such light layers, should my paint go a little bit askew and not exactly where I want it. Yep, yep, cause we're pros. I can wet that Q-tip. Go on in there. All right, this is tone four. All right, a little bit darker, a little bit darker. And I can wet that Q-tip and just take off that little tiny light layer that I just sprayed and not have to worry about the paint underneath it. And this is why I love Q-tips. There is a lot of forgiveness in that cotton swab, guys. A lot different than an eraser. I've never really played with erasers. I've seen a lot of other guys use erasers, electric erasers. I've scratched and I've Q-tipped. And that's pretty much how I do. So again, guys, now that I've got the tone four on the other side, flip her on over and repeat. <laughs> All right, this is the name of the game. And as you can see, I'm still taking my time and I'm still getting that stencil heavier where I need it to be darker and I'm going a little lighter on that stencil where it needs to be lighter. So even in my stencil work, guys, just because there's a hole there doesn't mean I want to blast it with color. I still want to play with some fades and I want to make sure that I don't get it too heavy. So take your time with your stencils too, guys. Light layers. That's all I can say. I really can't stress it enough, guys. The benefits are huge. So again, bringing my reference where it's within eye shot. I'm constantly, constantly referring back to my reference, guys. And this is where we start building up these darker tones. And we got to be a little bit more careful where we're putting our paint. But as you can see, not a lot of paint's being applied. And I, I don't know, man. I just feel like I'm on repeat all the time. But if you're struggling, guys, if you're not getting tones, it's probably because you're getting too much paint through your brush. Man, micro movements. You're pulling that trigger back ever so slightly. You want that pressed down for full air. And if you guys are curious, I run 40 PSI 99% of the time. I really don't change my PSI, the air pressure on my airbrush, unless I'm going for a speckling pattern for, say, stars or for some stone or granite work. Everything else, guys, 99% of the time, 40 PSI. There's that handy little Q-tip once again. And holding my breath when I'm in these tight areas, guys. Getting all zen. Making sure that even the slightest little hiccup isn't going to affect where I want this paint to be. I know my finger's kind of hidden behind my Neanderthal forehead there, guys. But it's micro movements. I, I just You're pulling back ever so slightly just where you want that paint to be. Again, we're painting a face that's not much bigger than a toonie for all you Canadians out there, eh? <laughs> for anybody else, uh, a silver dollar. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's small. We don't have a lot of room for error. So subtlety is key, guys. And tip dry. As you can see, guys, I am constantly, as we listen to the song of the stencils, <laughs> constantly cleaning my tip guys and even that little pow of paint that you saw me spew out the side there guys that's just another little kick I helped to get any dried paint off of that tip tip dry yeah it's something you gotta honestly it really is something that just kind of goes hand in hand with airbrushing hand <laughs> as we are stenciling in the hand but you guys, nowadays when I'm spraying, I don't even think about it. I just constantly, when I'm not spraying, when I am taking a break, just to step back and have a look of what I've done. Sometimes you get tunnel vision looking at the little tiny knuckles for so long. It's nice to step back and look at the entire piece as a whole. Um, every time I do that, guys, 
I just kind of take my little fingernail and just round that needle tip real quick and take off any paint that may have built up over the last couple minutes of spraying. And guys, like I say, it becomes second nature. I don't even think about it. Spend enough time behind your airbrush. You too. You too will build up that instinctual habit where you don't even think about it anymore, guys. It just becomes killer instinct. All right, so I stopped counting, but I'm pretty sure we got five tones on there. And now, guys, doing a little bit of red to map out the lips. I know she kind of looked funny without having any lips. <laughs> so let's do her some justice and give this lovely lady some lips. And as you guys can see, once again, real time, I'm not splashing red in there just because I know she's got red lips. Um, no, even here, guys. I am being very picky with where I am putting my paint, even through my stencil. So I'm not just blasting through that hole. There are some areas that are darker than others. And now we get in with our red. And again, I'm not blasting in this shoe red. I have a fairly transparent red and I am slowly building my tones saving what I want to be the highlights. So as this turtle slowly paints this shoe, you will see guys, it's a process. <laughs> it's not just blasting the thing red and calling it done. It's not blasting the thing red and putting some white highlights on it and calling it done. You're saving your whites transparent layers of red this is what's going to give you all your different tones by only using red and white so again lips on the other side repeat shoe on the other side repeat we're just going to blast through this and get back to what i was getting at or not i guess we're going to get onto the shoe in a little bit <laughs> but for now we're gonna get a little bit of paintbrush detail into the lips. Not too much, just bringing those tones back up, tightening it up. And next, we're gonna crank out these maple leaves. Well, real time, so it's gonna be kinda slow. But uh, I thought while we are here, guys, another little lesson that you might enjoy as to how I do the little maple leaves on this one. Now we're going for a fall color. So once again, I am using my darks at first to map it out. And then I will go in with my transparent colors over top, letting my whites fight through where I want it to be the lightest and where it's the darkest. Well, those darks will fight through the transparent colors too, guys. So map it out. Usually, if I'm doing a bigger object, I will typically map it all out in white and black and then just transparent layers. Yup. Transparent layers, guys. Building up your whites and darks, then going in with your transparent colors, allowing the whites and blacks to fight on through. White and grays, I don't use a lot of black. <laughs> if you've watched any of my other videos, you might know that. But, uh... Here we go, leaf number two. This is just a brown, the same FWS sepia. Thinned out a little bit with some fantastic so I can get some nice tight little lines with her. Slow and steady. Once again, cleaning that tip and back at her. Mm, can you believe how long this is taking? Yeah, <laughs> that was cheese. Uh, I'm gonna leave this alone now. Uh, leave it to Beaver. Uh, all right, uh, I'm I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> all right, guys, white, whiter than a lab rat in a jar of mayonnaise. Yeah, that's pretty white. All right, guys, and I'm just punching my highlights. One of the last times I will be doing this, so wherever it is lighter in my reference, wherever I want these highlights to sing, 
And guys, I know this is still washed out by the light. You really can't see a lot of what's going on. You just kind of have to trust me that I am applying paint. I'm, I'm not just doing this for the sake of doing this. <laughs> paint is being applied. <laughs> All right, and uh, something I like to do, guys, to bring all of my tones together. And a couple different ways I'll do this. For this particular project with us going with a 1950s, 1940s style pinup girl, this whole bike is to sort of play off the P40 Warhawk 1946. So I don't want these skin tones to be too rich. I don't want her to look like she's been sitting on a beach in Florida getting her Kardashian tan. <laughs> all right, guys. So I actually went over all of my skin tones, as you're kind of seeing right now, with just a little bit of white. And what that does, guys, is it kind of brings all the tones together. Just brings them all under one house, guys, under one roof. And uh, sometimes I'll do this with a little bit of pink. Sometimes I'll do it with a little bit of yellow. Sometimes I'll do it with a variety of colors, guys. And it's just, again, that light dusting of paint, as you kind of see me go over here, it just brings all of the hues together. And I know this isn't the best quality. I can't stress it enough. I wish you guys could see this thing firsthand. I wish my camera was better. Uh, maybe one day I'll be able to scrape some cash together and be able to afford some better equipment. But for now, guys, videotaping and recording this stuff for YouTube is not my full-time job. I just thought that I could share some knowledge, maybe grow a bit of a legacy. Is that too much to ask for some little dude in some horseshoe town? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, back to work. All right, so with this stencil, just mapping out the teeth and the whites of the eyes. Um... Once I got those nailed in and as bright as I can get them, now I can start toning everything down and getting all my fine details. What a paintbrush, guys. Yup, when I am all said and done with the airbrush, she goes back in the holster and I break out the paintbrushes, guys. And this is what sets me apart from a lot of other cats is this extra mile the devil in the detail as i love to call it <laughs> all right so we did some paintbrush detail on the lips now i'm going in with the eyes guys gonna paint in the irises with a little bit of green again trust me this is green i know it looks like uh gray or something from here but it's green. <laughs> it's green. And uh, again, guys, not applying solid colors here. A lot of my paintbrush strokes are done in little dabs. And this is how you get those fine details. When you look at anything, guys, rarely ever is it a solid color. Even something that was painted a solid color has shadows and reflections and highlights. So... The more detail, the more tones, the more different shades you can put in one object, the more realistic it will get. Now again, this is more of a stylized pinup. Uh, I kind of liken it to more of a graphic novel style of art, and it is beautiful, but it's just not hyper-realistic, so there is some leeway all right i'm not doing any blue tones in the skin uh believe it or not there's a lot of blue hues if you're gonna start painting some realistic skin greens as well in your shadows none of that on this one guys we're keeping this very soft all my skin tones are silky smooth on this one yeah yeah all right, guys, we're getting pretty darn close to wrapping up this one. A little bit more paintbrush detail for you guys to see. Some eyelashes going in with my gray, my blue, purple, brown mixture, guys. One of my favorite go-tos for the darks. And just tightening up those last little bit of details around the eyes. Some guys paint the eyes first. I don't know, man. I've always done them last, and for me, it's almost like Christmas because 
it's the eyes that bring it to life. So for the rest of the project, you're kind of sitting there and being like, yeah, it looks kind of, or sort of like a person, I suppose. But you get those eyes in there, guys, and... Well, they say it's the window to the soul, and I'm one to agree. <laughs> ah. Quit, quit staring at me. <laughs> All right, guys, a little bit of red was added to my dark mixture just to get in my darkened tones for the mouth. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> We're going to rock on through this, guys. I hope you can see the delicacy uh, to which I am applying my paint here, guys. Um, I am using a striping brush. This is called a Kafka brush. K-A-F-K-A. -A. Um, he is actually known for more scroll work, and this is what he sells his brushes for. But his teeny tiny brushes, guys, this is a 5-0, 5-0, it is one of the tinier brushes you can get, it still has long hairs, but man, that tip is almost like a pencil, oh, I love it, one of my favorite brushes, guys, one of my favorite weapons in the arsenal, as an airbrush wielding warrior, I definitely recommend you have some paint brushes in your toolbox, alright, guys, let me know what you think. Again, Q-tip in the little bit of lines that got a little too harsh. And there she be. <whistles> Actually, you can stare at me all day long. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know. We're going to blast through this other one. Literally get her done in a matter of minutes because this video is the longest one I've ever done It's been a lot of talking, but it's been fun. <laughs> All right So now that the skin tones are done guys highlights on the choose so as you saw I did save my highest areas my highlights they call it a highlight because that's where your reflection hits it and now I am just punching them with my white very transparent white multiple passes and now dusting again guys I have no other word for it other than dusting so a very transparent red if you saw me do the little swirl testing the paint before I got over here, man, there's not a lot of pigment to this red, but I can go over top of it and it just brings these hues together into one host. Guys, it's not like you walk around with white on your shoe. It's just a reflection. Underneath that will always be the color of the shoe. So this is why I like to use transparent layers, have those colors fight through, build those colors back up, dust them back down. And these are a few of the tricks of the trade, guys. At least, a few that I use. And now, guys, I've got that red in that brush. So I'm just going over some of these areas. Uh, knuckles, kneecaps, elbows, cheeks, and just punching a little bit of red. Just to get a little bit of rosiness out of the skin tones. And again, I will just do the lightest dusting of red. Like, man, I you'll see at the end here, I will pull that airbrush back about three to six inches. And that's it. That That's like the tiniest little bit of dusting. You see when I pull her back and kind of start swirling her around? That's my tiniest little bit of dusting. And guys, it just brings all these skin tones together. It's one of those things I do. I hope it helps you. And guys, that's her. Bang that out real quick on the other side. And then add some color to these leaves. As I've got the red, typically I would have done red last. You know, I got to go yellow, orange, red. But again, it's a leaf and it's pretty small <laughs> so I wasn't so crazy about the order 
Um, everything's transparent, so my red is still fighting through the yellow that I'm putting on right now. And once that yellow is applied, and this is some more real time, guys, it doesn't happen very quickly. And then I just threw some orange on top of that yellow, waited for it to fight to the bottom of the brush, and adding my orange tones. And that'll be that, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know this was a little bit longer. Uh, definitely the longest video I've put out thus far. Um, let me know, is this a problem? Should I have maybe cut this down? I know I was kind of jumping back and forth doing the shoe and the leafs. Maybe I should have just done the skin tones as is. Save the shoe and the leaf for the next one. Guys, we still have the hair, the dress, and the bomb to paint. And that will be for video number three. And then after that, guys, a uh, project wrap up. We are going to see this bike and this damsel all assembled and listening to it purr. Alright, what do you guys think? Well, I think we're just going to call this a flesh tone video, guys, and we will get on to the rest of the colors in the next video. Make you wait, make you work for it. But I hope you guys got something out of this one. I hope you learned a little bit. Again, we're not doing realistic flesh tones, so it's a little bit more uh, stylized. And that's the way she goes for today. All right, guys, I'm going to thank you once again for shopping by the studio. For I am nothing without you guys. Yeah, you know it. You make this channel what it is if i didn't have a fan base man i'd just be talking to myself well i'm technically talking to myself anyways but i'm good at it and until next one guys like follow subscribe thanks for coming along for the ride cheers and if you have any questions about this video, guys, hit me up in the comments and be sure to check out my other videos, airbrushing hacks, beginners, and project tutorials. Cheers.